Hey there, Jeremy Goodrich here, your real estate insurance guy. And today we're gonna to answer one of the questions I get the most often, and that is how much insurance do I need for my investment property? So when you're asking that question, you're really kind of asking four questions and we're gonna answer all of them in this video very quickly. The first is how much insurance do I need for my building? The next is my stuff. The third is liability coverage. The finally is loss of rent. Those are really the four things that you need to know how much coverage you should have. And then at the end, we'll dig into a rookie mistake that tons of in investment property owners make when it comes to insurance. Um, I see it on their coverage all the time when they bring it over and ask me to provide them a proposal. And I'm gonna show you at the end of this video how to avoid this mistake and how to make sure that your properties are covered properly. All right, let's dig right into it. So we start with building coverage. This is coverage for replacing the actual structure of your building. And the most important thing to understand about this is that insurance is based on replacement cost, not market value. It does not matter if you bought the property for $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000. What matters is how much it would cost to replace that structure. So that is what insurance is based on, and it's really key to understand that when you're talking about how much you, insurance you need for the building. Now, obviously, how much it costs to replace a building varies based on the building structure, where you're at, and all those kinds of things. But one rule of thumb is to base particularly a single family rental on at least $125 per square foot. If you have a larger apartment that's a 15,000, 20,000 square foot building, maybe you can bring that down to about $100 a square foot, but $125 a square foot, particularly for single family homes, is a key sort of base to go up from. And obviously, if you wanna to talk to a builder, or if you're a builder yourself, you'll have a real sense of what it would actually cost to replace that structure. One thing that's important is that you don't forget about the demolition costs. When a builder thinks about what it's gonna to cost to build a building, they're usually thinking about a raw site that's sitting there ready to build on. When you're actually navigating an insurance claim, that building has burned down or has been taken out by a tornado or whatever the unfortunate thing is that you're dealing with. And it's gonna cost a solid amount of money just to get that land back to scratch. For a single family home, that can be $20,000. For a large ap apartment complex, that could be $200,000. So you're not only figuring what it would cost to replace the structure, but also the demolition costs associated with getting that site back to the base. That's the building coverage. So now let's talk about your stuff. As a rental property owner, most of the time you don't have a whole bunch of stuff inside the property. And the way to think about stuff is if you turn the building upside down, you shake it, what, what falls out? If it doesn't fall out, it's part of the building. If it falls out, it is your stuff or the stuff in the building. So that's a nice way to think about those things. Um, those things are called personal property or business personal property, the things that fall out if you were to turn it over and shake it. Your policy only covers the stuff that you own. So think about it. If you've got an apartment complex with 16 units, pretty much all the stuff in those units is owned by your tenants. Your policy is not going to cover that stuff that is for their renter's policy, and it's why it's so important to make sure that they have a renter's policy. But there is some stuff that you own inside the property. A lot of times that is a stove, fridge, you know, may just be those two things. Could be a washer and dryer. Um, those are the most common things in spaces. So you wanna think about, okay, what do I own inside the property? Stove, fridge is pretty much in every unit, right? Um, but what else do I own in, inside the property and how much is that worth? For most folks that have annual tenants inside their units, I tend to think you know, $2,000 to $3,000 of coverage is probably gonna do it if you just have a stove and a fridge. And if you've got washers and dryers, maybe we go up to $5,000 per unit, something like that. Okay, liability coverage. How much insurance do you need here? Most important coverage on your policy. Even if you have, own the properties free and clear, you don't want any property coverage at all, you should have liability coverage. This is coverage for bad things that happen to other people because of you or your building. Your property obviously is an extension of you or your LLC if your uh, property is owned in an LLC name. 
Um, and so if bad things happen to other people because of that property, there's a party and someone gets hurt, someone trips and falls on the stairs or even the sidewalk in front of the property, and they are seriously injured or they get a personal injury attorney involved, your liability coverage is what's going to protect you in that situation. So how much should you have? Well, I would start at a base of a million dollars. No matter how many properties you have, even if you have a couple, try and, and have that liability limit at a million dollars of coverage. If you only have one or two, that may seem like a lot, but you think about the scenarios that could happen in worst case situations, a million dollars is going to address most of those situations for one or two properties. And so you'll be properly covered to handle those situations. One rule of thumb is to look at the assets of the LLC and make sure that your coverage is at least that number. So if you have $10 million in assets in an LLC, try and make sure you have at least $10 million of liability coverage. It's just a rule of thumb. You really wanna talk with your lawyer, your accountant, and your uh, insurance advisor on exactly what it is that you need, but it's a solid rule of thumb to look at the assets and say, well, let's make sure we've protected at least our assets. If you own these properties in your personal name, you should consider your personal assets as well because if something bad happens at one of those properties and it's in your personal name, a personal injury attorney can come after your assets as well as the asset uh, that was the building itself where the bad thing happened. So just make sure that you have enough liability coverage um, to address those kinds of things. All right, the fourth thing is loss of rent. If a property is out of commission for a year, a fire took it out, we've got to rebuild that property, you cannot make money off of it. If it was a 16 unit building, all of those units, people are gonna move out and aren't going to be paying you rent, and so you will not be getting that rent during the period of time that we're rebuilding this property. So uh, there is coverage on your policy that replaces that lost rent, which could be really important. Obviously, this is thousands of dollars that you are out during this period of time where you're having to rebuild, and to have that coverage is really, really helpful. So uh, how much should you have? Well, it should equal about one year of your rent rental income from that property. So if it's a single family home and that property is bringing in $1,000 a month, then you want to, would want to make sure that you have $12,000 of coverage for loss of rent. So you have coverage for at least a year. Most of the time we can get something rebuilt in a year at longest. And so that's why that rule of thumb makes a lot of sense. All right, so what did we address? Well, we talked about building coverage, making sure you had the building covered properly. We talked about your stuff, your personal property or business personal property, liability coverage, the most important coverage that you have on your insurance policy and loss of rent coverage for if you can't make money off of a building because we're rebuilding it over the course of time, we're gonna cover that. So let's dig right into that rookie mistake. So you, the biggest mistake that I see is that people underinsure a property and think it will be okay in a claim. There's a complicated answer to why this is the case, and there's a video I've created on coinsurance. So if you want to learn more about this, just search coinsurance and watch our video on that. But essentially, insurance companies have set up a protection system for themselves to make sure that you insure properly because they make money off of the amount of insurance that you put on the building. So if you only insure for 50% of the replacement cost of the building, and you think, well, I'll get 50% in a claim and I'll figure out the rest, I'll just knock it down, you know, clean the space off, go buy another building. Coinsurance is going to give you even less than that. In fact, you're going to be very disappointed in a claim situation. I'm working with someone right now who is extremely underinsured because he only had small loans on each of these properties and was thinking, well, at least it covers the loan. Well, insurance companies have set it up in a way where it probably won't even cover the loan and you'll be in real trouble and I'm trying to help him work through that. So don't make that rookie mistake of underinsuring your properties. Talk with your insurance advisor and make sure you are doing that right. All right, well, if you enjoyed this bit of information, we have a complete guide to REI insurance. It digs deeper into all the things I talked about here and more, helps you organize your insurance, helps you understand uh, how it works and gives you a nice base. You know, you don't wanna think about insurance all the time, but when you are thinking about insurance, you wanna understand it, make sure you have it right, have the peace of mind that it is correct, and then move 
on with your life. The Complete Guide to REI Insurance can help you with that. All right, and finally, if you'd like to watch more videos on our channel, you can do so by clicking right next to me there. There's all sorts of videos on insurance for your investment properties. And if you would like for Shine to help you out, if you feel like you want a real advisor, someone who actually cares about you, who wants to be a part of your real estate investing team, go ahead and click the link right below me. We can get on a phone call, talk about what your insurance scenario is, and get you set up with some options. All right, until the next time. Don't forget to shine.